So what do I mean by save me lots of money? I mean that when I was in college, I had this car where every other November it would, it would have a dead battery. And it wasn't until later in my career as a chemistry student that I figured out this was because it gets cold in November. And also I had a faulty electrical system. As it turns out, if you don't have anybody to jumpstart you and you don't have a portable battery, there are things you can do to manipulate the equilibrium that exists. Okay, it turns out that they depend on temperature. And so if you understand how a car battery is chemically structured, you can kind of find a way to fix it, even if you're broke. I was broke as a college student, I think most of us are. <laughs> When I was a kid, I spent three weeks um, with no power in the middle of winter in eastern Washington, which has a climate very similar to upstate New York. There was an ice storm that pulled down literally every power line in the city. And so it took weeks to get power back. And uh, I liked to read as a child, primarily because my sister would leave me alone. And um, that's hard to do in the winter when it's, when it's dark. So I figured out ways to, to make sort of portable lights so that I could read my books. And maybe you've seen some of them before. You can use lemons and potatoes and tomatoes to make tiny little batteries. Um, but we eventually ran out of that stuff. So I started resorting to things like salt. You can actually make a salt solution, conduct electricity, um, things like that. Uh, I also save a ton of money by treating my phones really, really well in the time that it takes for me to replace a phone. Members of my family get two or three phones because I, I treat the battery with the respect it deserves. So we're going to learn a little bit about these things and kind of, I don't know, you can call them life hacks almost. Um, but I, I think of it as applications for redox chemistry. So first, we need to understand that all of these things are batteries. And so batteries are electrochemical cells, that is, things that produce electricity using chemicals. Um, and they, they all work to generate electricity by having the right combination of compounds or elements in contact with each other. Batteries are also called voltaic cells, and they are also called galvanic cells. Those two words actually mean the same thing. There's some drama back in, you know, scientific history between Volta and I think his name was Galva, but anyways, the words mean the same thing. They mean batteries that spontaneously produce electricity, okay? So battery, galvanic cell, voltaic cell all mean the same thing. The opposite of those things that require electricity to go, that's called electrolytic batteries, okay? Um, the main thing is, do you have to have different activity levels between the metals that you're using for your battery in order for it to work? It doesn't have to be metals, by the way, but wet batteries generally are, a metal strip in contact with a solution containing its metal ion, and another metal strip in contact with its solution containing its ion, connected by a salt bridge, okay? So the, the two metal pieces have to be connected with wire, and you need the salt bridge to complete the circuit. In this particular example, zinc, copper, and we'll go into more detail. Um, actually, I'm probably gonna have you watch a, a video about it, but, this is a classic example of a wet battery cell. This beaker is called the half cell for zinc and this one's the half cell for copper. And basically, zinc metal is giving up two electrons, which of course, if it's giving up electrons, is called an oxidation. Um, and those two electrons travel around this wire so we can measure the voltage, but it travels around the wire to the, the copper metal. And so what happens on the copper metal side is the opposite thing. Those two electrons get added to the copper ion to produce copper solid, which is great because zinc is cheap as, as all get out and copper is not. So here we're consuming zinc to make copper and it's magical money making. Um, 
I'm not actually joking. It really would. It, it is a very dollars wise. It's a very efficient use of resources. So what's happening on the right hand side in our copper cell here, we're adding electrons. So that's reduction. So we have names for these cells. Okay, so an anode is where oxidation occurs in a galvanic cell. A cathode is where reduction occurs. So I remember this by thinking about red cat and ox, right? So reduction at the cathode, anode is oxidation. So that's how I remember it. And so the cathode in a galvanic cell would be the positive side and the anode is the negative side because just think about where the electrons are coming from right they're traveling this way so you have a negative charge build up on this side um, and they're coming over to here because there's a positive draw opposites attract right now the salt bridge is actually kind of important if you don't have it this battery will only work for a short period of time after that, it shorts out because you end up with a buildup of, um, let me think, how is it going to build up? It's going to be, I think it's going to be a negative charge is going to build in the solution over here because you have all these sulfates and the copper is precipitating. So you won't have the plus twos in there anymore. Um, and so a really big imbalance in charge short circuits this process. So in, in the salt bridge, any salt can be used. This is just an example, but literally any ionic substance can go in here. So the positive charge is going to leach into your battery to kind of replace the copper two plus that is being precipitated. On the other side, we are, we are building up extra positive charges over here because you're, you're, you're producing Zn2 plus. So you want something negative to diffuse into your solution to balance that out. The salt bridge is made with auger, which is the same thing you can grow bacteria on. So we have to make them pretty soon before your experiment. And it's important not to have any big bubbles in the auger because if there are, say we had a bubble right here, the charge can't travel through the salt bridge. Air is not very conductive. So we need the auger with the salt in it to be sort of a continuous column. And you need to make sure that it's dipped into your beakers when you do this, okay? So you're gonna get the chance to build your own wet battery cells. And the important thing to know is that galvanic and voltaic cells always have a positive voltage. So when you do this for real, if you get a negative voltage, it just means your red and blue clips are in the wrong place. Undo them and put them on the other metal. If you get a voltage of zero after a short time, check your salt bridge. Um, and also make sure that you are contacting the bare metal. You have to scrub these at the top where your alligator clips are going to go. Otherwise, the contact may not be great and it will affect your reading because oxidized metals don't react the way they're supposed to here. Oxidized by air, I mean.